Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Solar View podcast. I'm Tom Miller, editor of Solar View magazine and marketing director here at Baywa RE Solar Systems. And today I'm joined by a number of my Baywa colleagues. It's usually just me and maybe one other person, but we've got four other people on the screen today. So it's very exciting to be chatting with a number of you. And the topic today is is family leave. And it might seem a little outside the box to, to some folks, like why are we talking about family leave on a solar podcast? But you know, there's a really close tie for us between support and care for our employees and our ability to succeed as a solar distributor and to, to play the best part we can in creating a, a healthy solar industry. So it is an important piece for us to chat about. So yeah, we I thought we'd, we'd bring everyone together and, and talk about what has our approach been, um, where are we going, some of the lessons learned, and uh, something totally different. So I'm excited to dive in. And to join us, we have our Chief Financial Officer, Jody White. Thank you for coming on the podcast, Jody. Good to see you. Nice to see you. And we have Krista Riggle. Uh, she is our strategy manager in people experience. And I want to ask you in a second what people experience is, but hi, Krista. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Hey, Tom. Uh, we also have uh, Tiger Brown. She works um, in the Northeast Regional Crew. Thank you for joining us today, Tiger. Your first podcast. Welcome. I'll double mute it. But thank you. Thank you for the welcome. And uh, we also have Clark Galloway, and he's part of the Southeast uh, Sales Crew. Thanks for joining us today, Clark. Hey. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. And so, Krista, your title is uh, people experience. Uh, I think a lot of folks have, have heard of customer experience, but what is people experience? Yeah. So people experience is basically our version of HR, and it goes beyond the traditional HR aspects to really think about what the employee's experience is in working with our company. So looking at the employee life cycle and making sure that we're upholding our values kind of at each stage that an employee is going through and that our core values are kind of alive and well in our employees and then focusing a lot on our culture and being really deliberate about the culture that we create and viewing culture as the backbone of, or the foundation of the work that we're able to do as an organization. Great, thanks for that that context. And Krista is gonna be heading off on maternity leave soon, so I'm sure we'll come back to that as well. And we have some other folks, you know, Tiger and Clark are both back from maternity leave, so they're gonna talk a little bit about their experience as well. But I'd like to, you know, set the, let's just talk about the, the nuts and bolts. Um, what is, Baywa's family leave policy. And then and let's talk about, you know, why are we offering it? But Krista, maybe you'd jump on that question first. What is the policy that Baywa has? Yeah, so our family leave policy is 12 weeks of paid leave. Um, this is for employees becoming parents or need to take care of a sick family member. So in terms of becoming parents, it could be through having a child through adoption, surrogacy, whatever path that somebody takes to become a parent. Um, and it also applies to both dads and moms. So we're trying to be as equitable as possible and create space for both parental and maternity leave when it comes to comes to our policy. So all employees are able to take 12 weeks of paid time off. Um, they're also able to take an additional nine months of unpaid leave if they decide to do that and then still have a job when they come back. And really it's about making sure employees have space to be healthy and make the best decisions for them as they're entering this new time in their lives um, and counting on the organization for that support. Great. So yeah, why did why did we decide to do this? And Krista or Jody, feel free to, to, to flag this one, but why was it important that we take this on? So I can start with that. Yeah. And then Jody, you can add a little bit more context, but really... We didn't have a policy for a while, to be honest. We didn't have any Baywa babies coming into the fold, so it wasn't something that we had developed before. Baywa and then, babies, huh? <laughs> Baywa babies. Okay. Um, and then when we did, we realized that we, you know, we need some sort of policy to support new parents. Um, and then thinking about, I mean, on the podcast and articles, we talk a lot about health being one of our core values. So thinking about health as a core value really, I think, inspired us to make this change and to offer this benefit so that we are granting employees the space to, you know, even from a physical health standpoint, have their children and be able to recover from an emotional standpoint, being able to connect with their children after they have them and not have all of the immediate stressors of childcare or how you figure out what you're going to do. And then financial health as well, being able to support our employees during that time and not forcing them to take it as unpaid. So mm -hmm. kind of all of those reasons filtering back to our core value of health. Jody, from a from a company standpoint, what are the long term benefits uh, for a company like Baywa in offering this? 
Well, I think women and men are going to stay longer, right? When with the company, when they feel supported, that's kind of the the, the long term benefit. And I think the um, trust, the amount of trust that you can build with an employee by just being open to talking about what they're going through and how little we actually talk to each other about what's happening outside our lives and the Hmm. unwillingness of an organization to kind of engage with a parent and what that might be like. And I guess I had my children really young. So I was 23 when I had my, my oldest and I was fighting with a lot of guilt and a lot of like wanting to be a strong woman, wanting to be a perfect mom and not knowing how to talk about that with anybody really. Cause there wasn't anybody my age that I knew of that was having kids at that point in time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I just think that creating a space where we can talk to our employees about preparing for parental leave, what it might be like to come back and having honest conversations really, um, creates a, a space of trust that is long lasting. Mm-hmm. People experience, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Tiger, I'm wondering, so you, you came back from parental leave not too long ago. Does what Jody just, just mentioned resonate with you about, you know, how did you think about how you might take leave, how it might impact coming back or what you might miss? Did you have some like fear of missing out going on? What was your process in thinking about, gosh, uh, I want to have a kid, but what does it look like for, for long-term career plans? I did. Yeah. I, I went through the struggle. I was fairly new when I learned that I was pregnant too. So I was new at Baywa and I wasn't fully sure what the policy was. Um, So I was nervous about how I would relay that information and then prepare because I was still pretty much learning my role. Um, So I felt comfort in knowing that there was something in place that was supportive of employees going and having babies. It's a really stressful time as it is. And then I, during my pregnancy, the pandemic hit. So we had the stress of dealing with having a baby in a pandemic on top of the stress of worrying about, you know, work. So it was really comforting to know that we had a policy in place that would protect my role, number one. So I have something to come back to, but also that they were just supportive in me preparing for that time. So my team was very supportive in helping me to put things in place so that they could fill in for me while I was away. And I would not have to stress about how much time I had accrued in terms of paid time off. You know, at some companies, you have to have a certain amount of time accrued to be paid. So it was really comforting just to know that I could take that time away and just focus on my baby and put the stress into being a a new parent all over again. I have two other children and not have to worry about the security of my job. So I was very grateful for that. Nice. And Clark, I want to ask you a bit about your experience, but to Tiger's point about um, making sure that the company is set up for when Tiger leaves, you know, how, what, what's the approach around that? You know, because it's not just the employee need, is going to leave, but there's like a whole bunch of processes that need to be in place before that employee goes. So I'm sure those are being accounted for, but can you talk a little bit about that, how the company might need to reorient a little bit to allow our employees to have this flexibility and the opportunity to, to have kids and, and be successful long-term? Any thoughts on that? Krista, I see, I see you leaning forward. And then Jody started talking with, with her mute on. So it's like, hmm, who should I call on next? I think I'm going to bounce to Jody next. And then I want to hear from Krista. I'll take the initial part, Krista. Um, I think what's really important is it's, you know, to Tiger's point, she was pretty new when she found out she was pregnant. And it's really scary to come into a new position and then kind of announce that you're going to, you're going to have a baby and kind of what is the expectation. And there's a lot of, uh, Tiger, you can maybe talk more about this, but, you know, sh- when do I tell them? Should I tell them? Like, am I going to get fired? Right? Like, you know, not that that's legal, but it's scary. Right. Right. Um, And so I think it's really important. And one of the things that we want to try to do is establish what our policy is right away. So people feel comfortable and let both, you know, dads and moms know that like whenever this comes up, that this is our policy and we're here to support them. So I think kind of creating that space right from the beginning, you know, whether you're a parent now 
or, or later is really important, even in terms of setting the stage. And then, Chris, I'll let you talk about kind of once the news has been released, <laughs> the announcement has been made, kind of what the process is and, and how we set everybody up for success. Well, maybe can I ask, uh, mm-hmm. Jody said policy, you know, and policy can sound kind of scary in and of itself. So how do you take a policy and make it like, no, no, we want to help you. We want to support you. And we want you to know that we want you to have fulfilling, you know, family lives. So Krista, can you talk about that as well? That's actually a really interesting question. So in the hiring process that we have, I try to make a point that family leave is one of our benefits just from the get-go. Like anybody that joins the company, if you're going to have a kid, you get 12 weeks of paid leave. And then honestly, I think there's still a little bit of a fear element for people, even if they know that piece. So when somebody announces it, I try to really reiterate like my official stance and PX's official stance is that you are encouraged to take the full 12 weeks, take advantage of this benefit use it and um, not be scared. Cause I think some people are still kind of like, well, 12 weeks is, is great that they're offering it. I'm, I'm going to try to take eight instead. And then I think it's kind of up to us, especially in PX to push back and say, nope, the benefit is 12 weeks. So if you want 12 weeks, if you're interested in 12 weeks, you should take it. We're fully encouraging you to do that. Um, Cause there still is that little bit of fear. Like you know, how are people going to look at me if I take the full 12 weeks? Is that really what people do? Or is that just kind of what the company says? So I think we really have to reestablish that trust of it is our expectation that you take 12 weeks Mm -hmm. um, or do what's healthiest for you and your family. Yeah. Clark, um, you know, so you're a dad, you're, you're a man and, you know, we don't, we, we are beginning to become more accustomed to thinking about men taking paternity leave, but can you talk a bit about how you thought about the company's policy and how you oriented that with your work on your team and how you talked to your team about what your plans were? And yeah, talk about the experience of processing, like, oh, I'm going to be a new dad. What does this mean? Who do I talk to? What's it all about? Yeah, absolutely. And from the beginning, when I learned what the policy was at 12 weeks for both uh, maternity and paternity leave, I was just absolutely beside myself. And um, and it, it was still a few months into the new policy that um, that my wife and I received the exciting news. So when it began, I actually confronted first with a, a new mom on my team, just to kind of see what what should I do? Who do I talk to next? I, this was my first time becoming a dad. And, uh, and it was really exciting, but also kind of scary in the beginning. And you just really, you want to shout it from the rooftops, but you really don't know who to shout it to first. So, um, so I was just so lucky to lean on the support around me and slowly, but surely get the news out there. And then once that happened, we put in a plan to how my customers and my partners were were going to be addressed. And from day one of that plan to when I returned, there was not one second of sleep lost on are are my accounts taken care of? Mm -hmm. Um, It's just such an amazing uh, group of support that we have here at Baywall. And uh, and it really gave me that opportunity to spend time with my new family. And a lot changes in 12 weeks from a newborn to a three-month-old. And uh, just to be there and celebrate it. And, uh, and be there to, to help my wife and do what I can because uh, I understand maternity leave. Um, my wife went through a lot and she really showed her strength and courage and, and just, it was a totally disruptive time in her life. But to see that firsthand and be there to support her every way I could, I, I just couldn't be more grateful for it. Mm-hmm. Tiger, um, did, yeah, go ahead, Krista. Do you mind if I jump in on something? Cause I think no. there's a connection too between what Jody was saying Um, a little bit ago about making sure that people feel comfortable so that they can actually share the news and not be scared and kind of hiding that news for a while until they can't hide it anymore. Um, And what Clark was saying about the planning for his accounts. And I think from a business perspective, if we can create a place of safety for people to talk about these things, then it benefits the business as well. So we have such a longer runway to plan you know, how are we going to support this person's role while they're out? What changes do we need to make? How do we cross train other people so that they can take on more work? How do we make sure that our customers don't feel a difference when they're handed off to somebody else because we've been able to do that really deliberately? So I think that there's a a mutual benefit in creating that level of trust between the organization and the employee when they're planning for something like this. Mm -hmm. Kind of an interesting win-win there. Jody, what what do you think about that? The the focus on processes is so important in this case. 
Well, there's another benefit that I wanted to mention, which is that um, employees will get an opportunity when somebody leaves on family leave, they get an opportunity, the employees remaining get an opportunity to potentially step into a role that they wouldn't have gotten an opportunity. And Hmm. so there are a lot of cases where women will get, you know, six months in a management role, right? And they are given that opportunity just because of maternity or or paternity leave. And so it's a really interesting way to also support growth opportunities for employees. And then as long as there's a plan for reentry, and I, and we're not getting there yet, but I think that's the the important piece is having the plan and being deliberate with everybody just makes everybody feel comfortable and just willing to do things a little bit differently. Hmm. What about, you know, nine months is a long time to potentially have employees go away. Um, what any Any thoughts on that? Because I imagine if you're, I would struggle with thinking about, should I take nine months away from my job? Um, Tiger, did you have any thoughts about I'm assuming you took 12 weeks, but did you think about taking nine months? For a lot of people, nine months is not possible, obviously, but the opportunity is there too. Right. No, I didn't think about taking nine months. I actually struggled with taking the full 12. Um, Mm. I was one of the ones I was a little fearful to be so new, number one, and then require or request to take that full 12 months off. So I do recall having conversations with my manager and just a few other folks, like maybe I should just do six weeks because that's kind of the customary time frame that folks will take. I hope you don't hear the screaming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's <sorry>. perfect. <laughs> perfect. Um, so I, w- I really struggled with that. Um, and it was very much encouraged to at least take the 12 weeks yeah. and just enjoy that moment. Um, so nine months was, that's, that's a stretch for me. Um, I think just for me to. <laughs> we can chat about something else and come back to you. Okay. Let me, I'm going to go take care of that. I'll be right back. All right, cool. <laughs> Jody, did you have something to add there? Well, I kind of wanted to hear from Clark on his perspective as a, you know, as a dad taking time off and how difficult was that for you? And how did you talk about that with your friends? And there's a, there's a huge social stigma around taking time off, like Tiger was saying. And we also know that the benefit for the family, for the kid, right, long term for everybody, it's better for the family to take that time, um, whether it's, you know, staggered. Um, We have another employee who, you know, his wife took the first 12 weeks and then he took the next 12 weeks. So they got to spend six months, right, together um, with one of them being a primary care. But I'm really curious um, from Clark, your perspective, because I've heard lots from from women um, about their experience and really curious about how you handled that kind of the social expectations of of a father. Yeah, it was interesting um, because immediately I was excited to know I was getting that time off and I really wanted to take the full advantage of it. But I remember there was a time where I thought I'm going to take 11 weeks because I felt like there was just a weird, unwarranted guilt of taking that time as as a father. And um, and but then uh, Krista was like, let's let's just do the full 12. You you know, you deserve it and you're going to need it. And um, and so I'm very glad that I did take that the full time off. But uh, there was definitely um, some interesting feedback that I got from uh, you know some, from some men in my family and some friends and family of uh, wow you know back when I had you speaking of my father he's like I was back in the office the next day and just and things like that. But then um, there is that sense of wow I, maybe I did miss a lot in those first few weeks, which you really do. So I was just so fortunate for it, and there may have been some um, some moments of humble brag on my part that I was so um, excited that I got to spend this time um, with my son who's now eight months old believe it or not can't believe it's been that long already but um, but it was just it was interesting sharing that with us and then when I got to the point where I started discussing that with my customers and my vendor partners about what what's going to happen these next 12 weeks I can remember telling them that I'm going to be gone for the next three months um, on family leave and I remember the responses were mostly wow are you guys hiring because it was just such a, a unique offering that not you don't hear that often for a father to be able to take that time off and uh, and it was just uh, as an outside perspective looking in what a uh, what a unique culture we have and just how lucky we are to embrace it yeah along those lines uh, speaking of unique cultures and getting back to Jody's point about new opportunities and Krista Krista you're an expecting mom you're going to be leaving us uh, 
temporarily pretty soon. You know, how are you thinking about that? Really interesting because a lot changes in the 12 weeks. The organization can change a lot. People's capabilities that they develop can change a lot too. Mm. Um, So from a setup perspective, I think knowing for so long that I'm going to be taking time at some point. It's been a really great opportunity for me and Ira within PX, being able to be deliberate about the stuff that I'm passing off to her and creating a lot more growth opportunities for her than I may have if I weren't taking any time off because somebody has to be able to do components of that work. So it's been a great, my opinion is it's been a good opportunity for her too, because she's gotten kind of pushed and experience in these new ways so that we can kind of keep up the standard of, of what we're doing. So I'm excited to see how she develops and kind of what I come back to. And I'm also feeling pretty open-minded about what I come back to. There's a lot of work to be done at the organization and depending on how things are moving along four months from now or five months from now, just feeling open-minded about kind of the work that I get plugged back into and how I can best use my capabilities to support the organization. Um, Yeah. Which that's been kind of liberating too. It's the change factor has made me be really deliberate about okay, what do we need to do within this department? How do we need to build that out? And how do we maintain those expectations? So I think from a business perspective, it's been kind of good, but then it also kind of gives the flexibility to see, you know, what other things need to be worked on next and how can I get involved in those? Yeah, it's so interesting. Jody. I want to, I want to hear from you, but like 12 weeks in some ways can just go like that. Like we can all do our work for 12 weeks and nothing changes, but also Alternatively, you could have a child and 12 weeks later, all of a sudden you're a parent, you're a different person, you have different priorities in your life. Meanwhile, if you're in a fast moving company, the company may have changed to Krista's point. But Jody, like you've been working with employees for many years, it seems like a really unique opportunity for for some employees to come back refreshed, open to new opportunities, like Krista said, maybe tackle different things. The company may have changed. So you can come back different and maybe tackle some new things. What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. Um, It kind of reminds me of the jutsing, Mm. um, right? If, If you've been in this business long enough or at an organization long enough, you can see where somebody can come back, right? And you can kind of create that safety for somebody to say, I know your skills. I know your capabilities. We're going to have a space for you and let's just see what happens. I think that requires a whole lot of trust, right? In the organization employee relationship. And if that exists, it's pretty powerful. Like Krista can trust that she can come back and we're going to find something that's meaningful for her. And um, it's meaningful for us because we know that she's going to come back and she's going to bring her her full self to whatever she she wants to do. I think that, you know, people, individuals, we think that 12 weeks is so long and it's so short. Mm-hmm. And so we have a 12 week policy. I was just listening to the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You get to take three months, six months or 12 months and you get to choose. And I think one of the things that I would um, like to talk about or just welcome listeners to think about is all of this is a choice. And sometimes it feels feels like we don't have a choice in the way that we're approaching parenthood, right? Like I can, I have to take 12 weeks or I have to come back, right? Um, Sometimes I want to, I guess it's important for me to communicate to all employees that the way that you parent and the way that you career, if that's a verb, um, is your choice. And it's, it's difficult no matter what. And there's so much pressure on all of us to be like the best at everything. And the reality is, is it's really difficult to be really an amazing parent and an amazing worker. Mm-hmm. And it feels really complicated to even have that conversation. So um, I've talked to Krista a lot about it's okay for you to leave and to not come back, right? Or not come back for a year or to come back as in a different role. And that's really hard to hear and hard to accept. And I think Mm. there's something about choice that I I really want people to take seriously and for our organization to support the employees in in having that choice themselves. 
that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, there's a strong sentiment there around personal self-reflection, like what's going to work for you? We want to hear that. Let's have that conversation. Tiger, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, and and you're stepping away, but coming back and um, maybe just generally like what you've learned from motherhood, like we're we're talking about the opportunity to step away and become a mom. And obviously you you have two kids already. This is your third, but talk about the balance of of motherhood and and your career and, and, and the importance there. It's really tough, um, to be honest, and it's even more tough that we're in a pandemic. So I have a child at home doing virtual school, where I'm fortunate that the school is very engaging so that he's attended to all day. But then I have the two younger children. It's tough just being a mom in general, um, having a young child and having to adapt your life to the needs of that child in addition to any other children that you have. So, but in a pandemic, it's even more difficult and working a full-time job is even more difficult. Um, and I think with the role that I'm in, it's, um, it's very high paced. So you're constantly having to be available, which is fine but you have to figure out a good balance for yourself. So this has been a journey that has allowed, it's shown me a lot of strength that I didn't know I had, number one, Um, but it also shows me where I need to improve and just kind of make sure that I have a healthy work-life balance. So it's Mm -hmm. a work in progress. (laughs) I'm Mm -hmm. that perfect at it. And I have, I think a lot to still gain, Um, but I think that it is also rewarding to know that the company has been so supportive and they have reached out in various different ways to say, are you getting everything that you need? Do you need help with anything? So I I feel good, at least mentally. Um, Physically, I could use a break, but (laughs) mentally at least I have support. So I'm very grateful for that. Okay. I want to talk about, you know, some of the learning that we, that we've had, but Clark, uh, talk a little bit about, are you a different person now? What are you excited about when you're coming back? Yeah, I definitely feel very different and, um, and just very fortunate for my family. And, and this is something I wanted to do for a long time, but something I definitely learned as Jody mentioned earlier is 12 weeks is a very short amount of time. And it flew by. I remember when I first left for family leave, I was like, I'm going to start a raised bed garden. I'm going to totally re-landscape my whole property. And the property looks the exact same as it did two years ago. So um, <laughs> it's, just, it's amazing how much um, dedication it takes to, to really uh, take care of the little one. And my wife is lucky enough to be at home with him too all the time. So it was a, a team effort and just totally time consuming. Would I do it again in a heartbeat? I loved it every minute of it. And, um, and it's just very special. And one thing that I really realized that I needed was to, um, because all of a sudden overnight, literally a hundred percent of your time is dedicated to uh, this little being that you, you made, you know, boy or girl, whatever it is, it's like, that's your new life. And over the 12 week period, my wife and I tried to find time for um, one-on-one time with each other. Um, but not only that, but find time to um, to be with yourself as well. And I think that was very important to help us cope with the difficulties we experience. So my time alone was at four o'clock in the morning. So you, you find it where you can, but it's um, it's definitely a growing experience in that short amount of time. And still every day is um, a, a new learning experience, uh, being a new dad. Mm-hmm. Krista, speaking about supporting employees who maybe aren't out on family leave or don't have maternity or uh, paternity leave coming up, how has Baywa approached supporting the parents in the company who are who are out there now with full time jobs, with kids at home, and all of that? Yeah, so we have um, unlimited PTO, which I think helps to create flexibility for folks too. So you're not worried about if I have to take an afternoon off or want to take an afternoon off to do this thing with my kid or go to their game or pick them up from school or whatever it is that I have to have that time accrued and punch out and punch back in. So I think mm-hmm. that that creates um, a lot of flexibility in our culture for people. Our baseline expectation is that people are doing the work that they need to do within their role and also that they're taking care of themselves and being healthy and that extends to their family. So there's that aspect of it. We have, like I said, at the beginning, we didn't really have a lot of Baywa babies for a long time, but it, as our company has grown, we actually have a lot of Baywa families now. And um, mm-hmm. so we actually have a Slack channel just for the Baywa families where they can talk about different things that they're going through. And that came about mostly because of COVID, because all of a sudden schools are shutting down. Parents who have had their kids in school now have them at home and have no idea how they're going to do their jobs and help their kids like the at-home learning that Tiger was talking about. 
So we put together that Slack channel and tried to form connections between the parents to help them share best practices, different things that they were working on. And then we actually extended our family leave policy. So it wasn't just for, you know, taking care of a sick family member or bringing a new child into your life. But if you're coming up to a place where now you don't have any childcare options and you need to support your family and help your kids through whatever is going on for them, then those parents could also take advantage of the 12 weeks of paid time off so that they could make sure that their family life was moving the best that it could with everything that was going on and trust that the organization was going to be there and support them in that. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I want to start to wrap up here. Thank you all so much for your, your thoughts and sharing, you know, your struggles and your challenges, but your wins. Jody, you know, do you have any last thoughts about family leave from the organization's perspective? Are there any big lessons learned for us? Krista, feel free to weigh in as well. Family leave isn't going to be right for, for all companies, but you know, what's kind of a broad way that we can think about the balance of life and, and families and the importance of these things? Well, I might disagree with you and say that it is actually necessary. I think the U.S. is one of like three countries in the world that doesn't have mandatory family leave, right, where organizations, it's an option, right? So the rest of the world is way ahead of us. And so it's it's critical, right, for organizations to take this seriously for the health of their employees and, and their communities. So it's here to stay. It's I'm, I'm hoping to only increase our our options. So looking at that six month or 12 month, then we have 12 month and a nine month option for for unpaid leave, right? Can we extend that? And what does that look like? Trying to follow the Bill and Melinda Gates model and giving people that level of, of choice, I think is really important. And then I think Ensuring um, Ira isn't here, but she's in the PX department. Chris has been um, speaking about her, her transition. And we were on a call a while back and she wasn't even thinking about leadership roles because she wants a family. And that was shocking to me right? Being in the position Mm -hmm. that I am, that one would hold themselves back because they were wanting a family, but that still exists in our world. And I really want to ensure that our organization, yeah, whether you're a mom or a dad, right, that you wouldn't think that opportunities are not available to you because you're a parent, right? That just is um, not what we want. And so I I also want to work on kind of breaking down those societal norms that still exist. Mm -hmm. Krista, any additional thoughts as you prepare to leave us for 12 weeks up to nine months? (laughs) Um, I think from a tactical perspective that the planning is really crucial. So from the organization side, making sure that we kind of have our ducks in a row of what is this employee accountable for? Who do we need to transition that work to? What's kind of the standard of excellence that needs to be upheld while they're out? And then I think that that also benefits the employee. So like Clark had mentioned when he was out, like he was able to just like let the work stuff go and not be stressed about it. So I think that that beginning preparation is really important. And I think preparing for the return is a lesson that we've learned as well, because it's easy to think that, okay, this person's going to come back and they're just going to kind of pick up their job where they left off and the tasks will shift back like they were before. Um, But things change and processes change and we might find more efficient ways of doing things if we're forced into constraints. So I think making sure that whoever is on that team or leading that team or that department is really thinking about, okay, when this new person comes back, it's almost like onboarding somebody at the very beginning, like a new hire. And how can we make a plan to support them? So I think that's one of the most beneficial lessons that we've learned over the past year or so. This is the planning is crucial. And then that's how you can really make it into a mutual win-win between the organization and the employee. Great. I think I, I, I want to wrap up. I didn't ask either Tiger or Clark to, to do this, but like, can either of you think of one stellar experience you had while you were out on family leave? preferably related to your kids, but like, Hey, throw out anything. Clark yeah. wanted to do a lot of gardening, but didn't, I think that yeah, anything, that, anything that you, yeah. What, what might've you missed if you, if you didn't have the opportunity? I think timing was everything for me. My son was born right at the end of May and within a few weeks it was father's day. So I got to celebrate my first father's day 
with a newborn and that just meant so much to me and uh and it was really a special experience uh, to celebrate we went bird watching so we got to go out out in the you know the good old outdoors and enjoy the sunshine and uh as the first time as a new family so that is something that really stood out to me uh, and something that I'll, I'll never forget being the new time dad that sounds wonderful tiger how about you yeah, I think just just having the time, to be honest, um, with my two previous kids, I, I did six weeks off um, and I had to return. So just being able to see a little bit more of the milestones that children reach in their first few weeks of life was fantastic. Being able to be there for like catch the first smile. Those are sometimes things that you miss because you're back to work and you don't know when those things will take place. So it was just comforting to just have the time and just to be there full, your full self and just enjoy your baby. So grateful for that. Nice. I think that's a great place to leave it. Clark, Jody, Krista, Tiger, thanks for joining me today and talking about parental leave. It's been a it's been a pleasure. Thanks, Tom. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, thank you. All right. Bye everybody.